Stan Jibalisco here with a continuation of the Transformer Impedance Matching discussion from the video that I made uh, in this playlist, Teach Yourself EE Miscellany, called Audio Frequency Transformers or Audio Transformers. This uh, topic is discussed in my book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. <clears throat> I have before me the fifth edition and transformers and impedance matching are dealt with in chapter 18. What you hear in the background there is the 14 megahertz amateur radio band with Morse code signals on it. Uh, there's a station they call DX, that means in a foreign country, probably in a pretty much uh, sought after foreign country. Sought after meaning that uh, it's hard to get contacts from that country and all for some reason a lot of people collect contacts with um, foreign countries on their ham radios the way that some people collect coins or stamps anyway it's all on radio frequency and this is the same figure that I used in the audio frequency um, discussion I'm just gonna keep that ham radio going I'm down in my nerd cave here making this video for you and I thought you'd like to hear what what kind of stuff I listen to all evening long um, instead of going out and getting into trouble in Deadwood down there in the Black Hills of Dakota Territory. <clears throat> Back to the topic at hand you can use a transformer to match impedances at radio frequencies the same way that you can do with audio frequencies it's just that the uh, the sizes of the coils are different. Uh, I'm showing here a transformer with a powdered iron core. That's these dashed lines here. Um, oftentimes at radio frequencies, powdered iron cores will work. Uh, toroidal or donut-shaped cores are common at radio frequencies. Also, air core, meaning there would be no dashed lines here. There would be no core at all other than the atmosphere itself at radio frequencies but that's how coils can be assembled to make transformers at radio frequencies just as they can be done in at audio and all of the same impedance transfer formulas apply so I recommend that you go to my uh, video entitled audio transformers in this same playlist teach yourself EE -E miscellany and uh, look at that video and you'll learn how these formulas apply generally speaking if you want to transfer a certain input impedance Z dash in to a certain output impedance Z dash out in order to do that you need to take the square root of that ratio that you want and that'll give you the primary to secondary turns ratio so for example if this ratio is a hundred to one the primary to secondary turns ratio P divided by S would be 10 if this ratio was um, 64 to 1 it would be an 8 to 1 ratio here if this ratio were oh say I don't know 400 to 1 then you would have a 20 to 1 ratio contrary wise you know you might have a less a lesser ratio 4 to 1 then your primary to secondary turns ratio would be 2 to 1. But at radio frequencies, there's also another way to match impedances. Now remember, in all of these discussions, there's one overriding concern. One overriding concern. And that is there must be no reactances in the input or the output that means purely resistive impedances that cautionary tale being told let us now look at the other way that we can get <clears throat> impedance matching at radio frequencies we can make what is called a quarter wavelength section of transmission line that's what these two lines here represent is a radio frequency transmission line cut 
to one quarter of an electrical wavelength. And in order to do that, now you need to remember that you have to take the velocity factor of the transmission line into account. And uh, you also have to bear in mind that the input and an output have to be pure resistances. That's what I have shown here. That is a purely resistive input impedance, purely resistive output impedance. Commonly, your source is your input and your load is your output. So, if you have a quarter wavelength section of transmission line at a certain radio frequency, oh, I don't know, it's a, at this frequency, 14 megahertz, which we're listening to right now, the 14 megahertz ham radio band. <coughs> A quarter of a wavelength in free space at 14 megahertz is somewhere on the order of 18 or 19 feet with a transmission line with a velocity factor of say 80 percent what would that give you 15 feet or so maybe that would be the length of the transmission line you'd have to determine that length experimentally and get it cut to exactly one quarter wavelength. The frequency I'm listening to and that you're hearing all this stuff on right now is 14.03195 megahertz. That's right down to the practically the hertz. Or, uh, well, yeah, practi yeah, practically down to the hertz. Down to the 10 hertz increment. Anyway, you cut this to one quarter of a wavelength long. Now, Suppose that you're, now your, your ratio that you get of impedance transformation, it's going to be very interesting. This Z sub zero, or Z naught, or, is the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. I also have made a video in this playlist, Teach Yourself EE e. Miscellany. Here's the name of it. In this playlist, Teach Yourself EE e. Miscellany, there is a video that deals with this topic, characteristic impedance. That's what that Z sub zero is. All transmission lines have a characteristic impedance. When you want to make a transformer out of a piece of transmission line like this, you need to bear in mind that the characteristic impedance of this transmission line should equal the geometric mean of the source resistance and the load resistance. That means if you multiply R sub in times R sub out and then you take the square root, that should equal the characteristic impedance. So let's just write that formula down, and I'm going to uh, change the notation just a little bit. Let's call the characteristic impedance simply Z. You want this Z to equal R sub in times R sub out to the one half power or the square root of of that. So that's what the geometric mean means. The geometric mean of two numbers is the square root of their product. You take that and you will get the characteristic impedance that you need. Contrarywise, you can also say that if you square, well, if you multiply the, the input and the output impedances like that together, you should get the square of the characteristic impedance like this. 
let's just take a real world example instead of chattering away with all these formulas. Let's suppose, for example, that you have a source that has a 50 ohm impedance, purely resistive. That is a typical ham radio transmitter output impedance is 50 ohms pure resistance. Suppose that you want to match an end fed half wave length wire. That's your load. That's going to have a huge impedance. So and it's going to be purely resistive as well. 50 ohms here. Let's just suppose that you have a thin wire in free space exactly a half of an electrical wavelength long. 5,000 ohms of pure resistance here at the load. That's your end fed half wave wire. You want to match that. How can you do that? Well, you multiply 50 by 5,000, and then you would take the square root of that. Well, another interesting thing that you can note is that the answer is going to be 500, by the way. 500 ohms is going to be what you want for this characteristic impedance. And they happen to make transmission lines commercially. It's called ladder line, which has a characteristic impedance of just about 450 ohms. So that's pretty close. So you can take a 450 ohm quarter wavelength section of transmission line, connect it to the output of your transmitter or the output of the coaxial cable coming from your transmitter, which also has a characteristic impedance of 50 ohms. 50 is to 500 as 500 is to 1,000. 500 is the geometric mean of 50 and 5,000. So if you do that, here's your half wavelength wire for your load, your quarter wavelength of transmission line, and then that's either connected directly to your transmitter or to the coaxial cable from your transmitter. You might recognize this. This is just a real world practical example of how this can be done. You might recognize this kind of a system. A quarter wavelength of transmission line and a half wavelength end fed wire connected to just one side of that transmission line. You might recognize that as a good old fashioned Zeppelin, Zeppelin antenna. Zeppelin antenna, also known in amateur radio lingo as a ZEP. That is a still a usable antenna at many of the ham radio, uh, shortwave ham radio frequencies. A Zeppelin antenna takes advantage of this very principle. And this piece of transmission line right here is in fact a radio frequency impedance transformer provided once again that you don't have any reactants at the input and the output if you if you have reactants there it's gonna really mess things up not only figuratively but literally so that is that an impedance matching transformer made out of transmission line. Stan Jibalisco, W1GV is my ham radio call sign. Whiskey, one, golf, Victor. I tend to use the CW or Morse code band, 14 megahertz most often. You'll find me there if you're a ham radio operator. W1GV. Stan Jibalisco signing off once again from the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America. Until next time. Das Vidanya.